Hi friends, welcome back. I hope you're doing awesome. I'm just going to share um, some ingredients and items um, that are helpful when making your hair and skincare products. Um, there are a ton of ingredients out there. It can be overwhelming. Um, so I'm just going to share some of these ingredients. I hope you find it useful, helpful. If you're someone that makes uh, DIY um, products at home or you sell your products, this is just a general guide and I hope you find it helpful. So let's jump right in. And if this is your first time stopping by, my name is Esther and I make DIY hair and skincare videos. And I also sell my products on my website. If you want to check that out, the website will be linked in the description box. So let's jump right in. So if you're going to be making any type of water-based product, maybe like a lotion, cream, face wash, body wash, anything that contains water, you are going to need a preservative. You can't work your way around this one. Anything water-based requires a preservative. There's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of information that can be overwhelming. Um, but just educate yourself, do your research on preservatives. I have two videos I'll link in the description box if you want to check that out. So just know that if you are making any of this type of products that contain water, you are going to need a preservative. Either for your DIY, for your small business, it really doesn't matter. Um, but you are going to need one and you can choose between a natural or synthetic one. Um, it really does not matter. It's a matter of preference. So whenever you decide you're making your product, your water-based product, and you're wanting to decide which preservative to use, here are some general guidelines that can help you. So whatever preservative you choose, make sure it's broad spectrum. Um, sometimes you may have to do a combination um, to get the broad spectrum um, protection but just make sure that you choose one that's broad spectrum here's my list of suggested preservatives there are so many out there but these are the ones that i've used in my formulations so you can do your research and see if that will work for you um, but i always recommend buying from reputable suppliers um, I know sometimes you might have to purchase from Amazon, um, but try to choose reputable suppliers because they'll help you with um, the usage rates. They'll give you directions on how to use that preservative um, either on their website. All that information will be there. So that way you know how to use it. I get so many questions about how much of a preservative to use, how to add it. Um, but if you're buying from a good supplier, all that will be on their website. So I always buy a lot of my preservatives from Lotion Crafter. Giving you an example here with Uxil PE9010. So if you go over to their website, it's going to have all the formulation information, all the information about this preservative, how much to use, the usage rate. It'll give you information about the type of products you can use it in. So that's very helpful. But a lot of times if you buy from maybe somewhere like Amazon, you may not get that information. So always buy from good suppliers. That is my main tip because that will be helpful in deciding if this will work in whatever you want to make. Usage rate is very important because that will keep you from over preserving or under preserving your formula. So make sure you're checking out the usage rate. The usage rate is always listed on their um, supplier sites so that way you can use it correctly in your formulation. Next is um, equipment for testing the pH of your finished product. Um, so the pH goes hand in hand with preservatives because you have to use your preservative in a particular um, pH range. So whatever uh, preservative you buy um, from a good supplier, like I said, it's going to tell you what pH they recommend. So it's very helpful to have some way to check the pH. Um, you can use a pH meter. If you go to a uh, website like Amazon, they have a million and one pH meters. 
Um, this is the one I use. Um, if you don't have access to a pH meter, you can use pH strips. They are not as accurate, but it's better than not using anything. So get yourself a pH meter or pH strips, but just keep in mind that the pH meter is going to be much more precise, much more accurate. So do not leave this out when you are making products, even if it's just for yourself, you still need a way to check the pH. And especially if you're selling your products, make sure you are checking the pH, please. That is so important. So the next ingredient I'm going to mention um, is your plant butter. So with plant butters, you use it for so many things, your body butters, creams, lotions, face washes, body washes. There are so many things you use um, plant butters for. So. The thing with plant butters, um, there are so many to choose from, so it still comes down to preference. So here's my list of um, common plant butters that I've used in my formulations, products that I've made. And one question I get asked a lot of the time is, which one do you use? Do you use unrefined? Do you use refined? I get that question a lot of the time. So once again, it comes down to preference. With your refined um, butters, you're not going to have a smell or a scent because all that has been removed during the um, as a refining or production uh, process. With unrefined, you're going to have the scent, you're going to have that natural smell from the plant butter. For me personally, I use unrefined um, plant butters in anything I make. Um, it is my preference, but I know there are many people that don't like the natural scent of it. So you can always use refined, um, but that is just my preference. Um, I use it for my body butters. I use it for my lotions, my creams, even some of the facial and body products are formulated. I use my shea butter in all those products. So once again, it comes down to preference. Um, I think from what I've read and seen, the unrefined retains pretty much all the benefits from that um, butter that you use versus the refined. Not to say that the refined does not have its own benefits, but the unrefined has all the you know, natural um, ingredients preserved during the whole production process. So you can just choose which one works best for you. So next are the plant oils. These are some of the things I consider when choosing a plant oil to work with or use in any of my products. Um, so this is just a helpful guide um, because there's so many oils out there. I mean, there are so many choices. Um, so for me, what I use as a guideline when working with oils, even if I'm using it for um, any product really that I, I am making, body butter, even body oils, scrubs, you want to look at the comedogenic scale. The comedogenic scale is so helpful when choosing your plant oils, even your body butter or your plant butters. Um, it's a very good guide um, on um, choosing those oils and butters. So really the comedogenic scale, you can just go on Google, type in comedogenic scale and there's so many resources. Um, I choose, I usually use this one and it's going to give you a list of the plant butters, the plant oils. It's going to give you the range, usually from zero to five. It's going to tell you how likely an oil or butter is going to clog up your skin. So whenever you're choosing a plant butter or plant oil to work with, this is a very um, helpful and useful scale. Um, it's going to guide you in choosing the oils, obviously, and it gives you the information for the skin type the oil is good for. It gives you the rating from zero to five if that oil or butter is going to clog up your skin. So something like shea butter that I use a lot ranks zero in terms of clogging up your pores. So that's why so many people use shea butter. So many big brands use shea butter because the likelihood of shea butter clogging up your skin is very low. So keep this in mind when choosing your plant butters and oils.
Next are your surfactants. So these are your cleansing agents, the things that um, like ladder up, that have all the bubbles that are in your face washes, body washes, shampoos, any cleansing agent. Um, you'll find it in those type of products. So now it's a matter of choosing between synthetic or natural. Um, it's still a matter of preference. You have to test out whichever one you choose. You have to test it out in your product. See how it feels on the skin. If it's too drying or stripping on the skin. The only way to know this is to test it out. You will never know unless you try out that ingredient. Um, I have a list of surfactants. I've tried several. And I have my favorites that I kind of stick to because I like how it feels on the skin when I make my products. Um, so once again, things to consider would be how harsh the surfactants are, um, how stripping they are, if they are an irritant. Some surfactants are more irritating on the skin than others. So you, like I said, you have to um, test it out and see if that works for you. Um, some of my favorite surfactants would be Desol Glucoside, Coco Glucoside, I like SCI. SCI is so mild and produces really good lather and I also like Cocomido Propyl Betaine. Um, but here's my list, um, check them out, see what you have available to you, see if it works in your formulation. And then you can also use um, other cleansing agents that may not lather as well. Um, I've tried out the soap nuts and the, is it shikakai powder? I don't know if I'm saying it right. Um, but those also lather very well. They are completely natural. They may not lather as much as the other surfactants, but they're good to test out. <music> Next are hydrosols extracts. Hydrosols are the steam distilled um, part of your plants like your roses, lavender. Um, they, they are really good for formulating. Um, they are more stable in your products. I know some people make their own rose water and things like that. Those are not stable in your formulations. You want to stick with hydrosols if you can. And um, extracts are optional. Um, you don't have to use extracts. Extracts have amazing benefits though. So if you're able to get that for your formulas, then by all means do so. But I always prefer purchasing hydrosols from a good supplier. Um, some people make theirs, some people get machines and they make their own hydrosols. So do your research, see if, if it's an ingredient you would like to include when making your products. I hope you found this video helpful, useful. I know for me, when I started making my own uh, products at home, my DIYs and even products that I sell, I got overwhelmed just with the amount of information that's out there. And uh, trust me, I've made my own mistakes with purchasing ingredients I really don't need. So that's why I try to narrow it down. Um, so I hope you found this helpful. As always, please don't forget to subscribe if you've not. Please like this video as well and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any new videos I upload. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.